So what we can see here is a cross-sectional model of a cervical vertebra, and we can tell it's cervical because if we look at the spinous process, we can see that it's got a nice bifid spinous process, so it's a typical cervical vertebra. So we know the spinous process is down here on the bottom. The body is up here, so this will be anterior and then posterior. What we're most interested in, of course, though, is what's in the middle here, inside the vertebral foramen, which is, of course, the spinal cord and the coverings that are around it. So what we can see here, um, firstly, a couple of structures you don't need to know. So I just want to point them out so you're not fooled by them, though. This one here, on the inside of the posterior aspect of the vertebral arch, this is a ligament. Now, you don't need to know this ligament, but that's a ligament there. And then inside that, we have the epidural space, which is full of fat and blood vessels that we can see here. Now, again, you don't need to be able to identify that, but that's what that is. Now, this is the epidural fat. So this, then, is the dura mater. So let's, let's zoom in a little bit so we can see it a little more clearly. But this layer here is dura mater. And then that's the outer tough layer of the meninges. Now, there are three layers. So the, the other membrane that we can see here that's on the inside of the dura, separated by this little brown line here, this is the arachnoid mater. So we've got dura mater, arachnoid mater here, and then this space here, this empty space, is the subarachnoid space. And of course, in that space in life, there would be cerebrospinal fluid and also little web-like strands that it gets its name from. So we can't see the strands or the fluid here, but this space is a subarachnoid space. And we can see that again here. So then this deep layer of membrane that's sitting directly on the spinal cord, that's the pia mater, or gentle mother. That's a very fine, very thin membrane that you won't see on the specimens. So we've got dura, arachnoid, subarachnoid space, and then pia mater here. So there's four structures there, three layers and a space. Now what we can see then, if we just move the model a little, what we can see on the anterior side here, on the anterior aspect, is there's a couple of yellow structures here. So there's one here and another one here. These are the anterior and posterior roots. So this one that's closer to the front is the anterior root. This one that's more posterior is the posterior root. Now, both of those roots, where they're attaching to the, to the spinal cord, are actually smaller divisions. These are rootlets. So these are the anterior ones, so these will be anterior rootlets. And you can see that they all combine as they get further out from the spinal cord, they combine to form the anterior root. So rootlets here, an anterior root here. Now the anterior root on this model is reasonably long. You can see quite a bit of it here. Now this one then is the posterior root. And again, we can see that where that's, actually if we tilt it the other way, we can see on the posterior aspect, here are the posterior rootlets. Now, the posterior root is sensory axons or axons of sensory nerves coming into the spinal cord on the posterior side. Now, it has a swelling in it. So this big yellow bit here is a swelling of the posterior root and that's called the spinal ganglion. So if there was a pin here, it's spinal ganglion. Once, the, once that's narrowed, once the posterior root is narrowed, though, that's where you would call it the posterior root, not the spinal ganglion. So if there was a pin here, that would be posterior root. So the cell bodies of those sensory um, neurons are here in the spinal ganglion. So the axon might be coming from the skin, from a receptor in the skin, and then it travels all the way along 
say the upper, li well, probably the upper limb, seeing as we're here in the cervical region, travels all the way along the upper limb and then comes into the, p comes past the spinal, or through the spinal ganglion, past its own cell body, and then into the spinal cord here on the posterior aspect. And there it will synapse with another neuron here, so the signal can be carried on. So that's posterior root, spinal ganglion, and posterior rootlets here. With the anterior rootlets and the anterior root, this time there'll be motor neuron cell bodies here, and if you um, are moving some part of your body, signals will arrive here on that cell body to stimulate that this neuron. A signal will come out through the anterior rootlets, through the anterior root, off down the limb to the muscle, and then that muscle will be um, will, will it will contract and you'll move. So anterior rootlets and root are motor. The spinal ganglion, posterior root, and posterior rootlets all sensory. Okay, so that's that. Um, those structures there. Now, in inside the spinal cord itself, though, we can just see a few structures that we're interested in, where we have white matter here. Remember, white matter is axons, so that's the cables that are transmitting the signals. So white matter here, and then grey matter. Now, the grey matter sometimes described in the spinal cord as being an H shape, sometimes described as being butterfly shaped. So here you can see that grey matter quite clearly. Grey matter, cell bodies. So these are all cell bodies inside the spinal cord. So in the spinal cord, the cell bodies are deep and the white matter is around the outside of those cell bodies. Now right in the centre, we have a canal, and so it's aptly named the central canal. Now in theory, it's full of cerebrospinal fluid like the subarachnoid space. Uh, in practice, it's often so tiny such a tiny, tiny little opening, there's not much in it. Okay, so white matter, grey matter, central canal, and then we've got pia mater here, subarachnoid space, arachnoid, and then dura mater, and we've got anterior rootlets and posterior rootlets, posterior root, anterior root, spinal ganglion, oh, and of course, the one I forgot, sorry about that. Um, where the anterior root and then the spinal ganglion actually meet and become one structure, that's the spinal nerve. So that's lateral to where you can see the spinal ganglion and the anterior root. So it's out here, that's the spinal nerve. And that's, so this spinal nerve, if this was C5 vertebra, this would be C5 spinal nerve. 